hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel um in this video we are going to begin a series on vectors and um, we're going to begin with introduction to vectors okay so we have vectors okay so what is a vector and you remember that generally we have two types of physical quantities those with magnitudes those with magnitudes only which we call scalars and those with uh, both magnitude and uh, direction okay so and these ones we call <clears throat> vectors all right and so by definition a vector is so by definition a vector is a physical quantity so a vector is a, a physical quantity with both magnitude and direction okay so for example we have displacement is a vector quantity and uh, we have other examples such as velocity Force is a vector quantity. We have acceleration, we have pressure, we have momentum, and many others. Okay, so these are vector quantities because they have both magnitude and direction. For instance, if I, I we want to talk about displacement, you can see that if a boy, for example, starts a journey at a, from a point A and moves a distance to another point say b let's assume he covered seven centimeters or meters in the process and then he decides to turn back and move a distance backward okay and then in the process he covered four centimeters so you discover that if we want to discuss the uh, let's say he came to point c now if we want to discuss the displacement we are going to be looking at the distance covered in the direction of his movement. And the direction of his movement was from A towards B. And so the total distance he covered, you know, in this motion is actually from here to here. Okay, so because this will be his current position at the time. That's point C. So you can see that the distance covered by this boy is actually 3 centimeters only. That's the displacement, sorry, is 3 centimeters. But the distance is going to be the total length gotten from the whole movement, which is actually 7 plus what? 4. So the distance is going to be 11 centimeters, while the displacement is just equal to what? 3 centimeters. The reason is because for displacement being a vector quantity, the direction is important and he moved towards B. And the only displacement covered, you know, from A towards B is actually 3 centimeters. But the total distance covered in the whole movement is about 11. Okay, All right. So um, now geometrically, <clears throat> geometrically, every... Geometrically, a vector is uh, represented by a directed line segment. Okay, so if you want to, you know, represent a vector on a paper, you know, diagrammatically, we do that using a line segment. Okay, a line segment that is directed, something of this nature. Okay, like what I did here. The line represents the magnitude of the vector and the arrow upon the line, the arrow stands for the direction of the vector. Okay, so the implication, if you say that the line represents the magnitude, the meaning is that the bigger the line, the bigger the, the vector. That's why if you watch this diagram here, I had to use a longer line to represent 7 cm and then a shorter one to represent 4 cm and even 3 cm. So because the magnitude is represented by the line and then the direction 
by the arrow okay so now I haven't seen this and what it means is that if I have a line segment say from point P to Q okay so now this line segment represents a vector PQ that can be written as PQ in this manner and you can actually write it as just PQ now being PQ means that you can write it as QP because the first letter stands for the the beginning point that's the point where it started and the Q stands for the ending point following this direction so the meaning is that if I now decide to say QP what I'm actually saying is that I am looking for this other one a vector that will move from Q to what to P that means the opposite direction so the meaning is that uh, vector QP is not the same as vector what sorry pq is not the same as what qp all right in fact in any case our pq is actually equal to minus qp because their magnitudes are just the same the only difference here is just the direction and so you use the negative sign to represent the opposite direction okay now so having seen all of this the next thing we want to look at now is the uh, types of vectors okay so the first one we want to begin with is what we call the zero vector so what is a zero vector meanwhile before we come to this point it is necessary that we define how we represent the magnitude of a vector now so we represent the magnitude of a vector if you have a vector pq we write the magnitude in this manner now note that magnitude talks about the length the size of that vector so we write we represent it with absolute value on the both sides of the vector so if you have something like vector v its absolute value is written in this form okay so let's go the reason i had to do that is because we need it in some of the definitions here and so we say that a vector is a zero vector if its magnitude is zero so if you have vector u and the magnitude of vector u is zero then you call u a zero vector okay geometrically what that means is that if i have pq just as we said here that this means that your p is exactly the same thing as your q that means it is just a point a point the starting point is the ending point also and so there is no length in between uh, there's no distance at all no magnitude at all so the magnitude is just what zero okay and then the second one is what we call the unit vectors okay so what are unit vectors or what is a unit vector a unit vector is simply a vector whose magnitude is one so if i have vector v and i determine the magnitude and is equal to one then you say that that vector is a unit vector and please quickly note that if you have a vector which is not a unit vector we can actually find a unit vector in the direction of that particular vector so for instance if w is a vector and it is not unit that means the magnitude is not one we can find a unit vector in the direction of u of w okay so and how do you do that 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 unit vector is represented as w caret and it is equal to w itself all over the magnitude of w okay so which you can also write as one over magnitude of w multiplying w okay so please take note of this of course we are going to discuss this further under unit vectors as a subtopic okay that's very important that we take note of that okay meanwhile also note that uh, from what we just discussed here which we also will see when we begin to talk about component form of vectors that if you have for instance this is the x uh, sorry the z axis the y axis and you have the x axis here then i can actually define the unit vectors on this axis okay so the unit vector we know that the unit vector along the z axis is represented as k the unit vector along the y axis is our j and the unit vector along our x axis is usually the k so we're going to see all of this as we progress all right and so 
um, <clears throat> the third example or type of vector we're going to talk about is what we call equal vectors. Equal vectors. So two or more vectors are said to be equal if they have exactly the same magnitude, the same magnitude and the same direction. Okay, so if the magnitude and direction of two vectors or more, you know, are the same, so you say that they are what? Equal, and you can also call them equivalent vectors. So you can as well call them equivalent vectors. All right, okay. <clears throat> now, what it means is that I have, um, okay, something like this, you know, two vectors, rising from the same point and uh, going in the same direction so you said that they are equal and then what if they are going they are of equal magnitude but going in opposite direction that's also another type of vector which we call negative vectors so negative vectors two vectors are said to be negative of each other if one if both of them have the same magnitude but exactly opposite direction okay so if you have for instance pq pq is the negative vector of uh, qp because this means that pq and uh, um, qp means that both of them have the same magnitude if you check like what i said uh, when we started the magnitude is just the same now but their direction this one is starting from p to q and this is starting from Q to P, opposite direction. Okay, so, and that is why we said earlier that PQ is actually equal to minus P, uh, QP because they are negative uh, vectors. All right. Okay, so please uh, uh, take note of that. So we go to the fifth one. The fifth one are what we call the collinear vectors. And so what are collinear, sorry, five, what are collinear vectors? According to the name, collinear, co means common, and linear means, you know, same line. That's common line. When you have two or more vectors lying on the same line. So, for example, if I have something of this nature, this is a line. And then on this line, you now have a vector this way, okay, that way and then another vector on that same line, whether the same direction or not, whether they are having the same direction or not. So assuming that this is AB, and then this one is CD, okay? So whether their directions are the same or not, so far as they are on the same line, or they are parallel to each other. So if I have a vector <clears throat> that is parallel to another vector, <clears throat> Whether they are in the same direction or not, those two vectors are said to be collinear vectors. Okay, so we move over to the next one. And the next one is what we call coplanar vectors. And so what are coplanar vectors? Coplanar vectors are vectors that are found on the same plane. According to the name also, co means common, the same planar means plane so they are on the same plane or if they are on different planes then they have to be parallel to the same plane they are either in the same plane or they are parallel to the same plane okay so um, what that means is that if i have my for instance the three dimensional plane that i just drew earlier on Okay, where this is our x, y, and z, you know, axis. And so if I have, let's say, something this way, and then inside this plane here, uh, you have different vectors, uh, something this way, like um, maybe vectors like this, like this, different, different vectors. Okay, so... These vectors are not parallel to each other and they're not having the same, you know, direction. So, but because they are in the same plane and what is this plane? The YZ plane. So you say that they are coplanar. 
and if they are not coplanar, if you now have other vectors, okay, maybe a vector here and another vector in this other plane, and all of them are, the, these two vectors are parallel to this same plane, the x, the yz plane. So you say that, uh, that these two other vectors in green are also coplanar, even though they are in different planes. Okay, now, and um, finally, in our discussion here, we are going to see the type of vectors that we call the co-initials. Co-initial vectors. Okay, and what does that mean? Just as we have also said here, co means common. That means they are starting from the same point. Okay, so the implication is that you have, just as we have here now, all these x, y, as x, which are actually vectors, you know, having the same initial point, which is the origin zero. Okay, so if you have two or more vectors rising from the same point, for instance, you have your point A, and then a vector is rising from A to B, so this vector is called A, B, and then you have another vector from the same A to C, this vector is called A, C. Okay, so you say that these two vectors, A, B, and A, C, are what? Co-initial vectors. So, however, C, A is not co-initial to them because C, A is rising from C. And that same thing with B, A, which is rising from B. But A, B, and A, C, of course, by the name, A is the beginning point for two of them. Right? <clears throat> okay, so I haven't seen all of this. All right, and that's uh, where we are going to. And But that's not all the types of vectors that we have. And so in our subsequent video, we are going to begin the concept of position vectors. Now, position vectors is important for us to discuss because that's going to help us begin to define vectors according to component form or component definition, you know, of vectors. Um, uh, and that we are going to see in our next video. And so this is where we're going to end it in this video. Um, thank you for watching. Please kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, like, comment, and share our videos. Bye.